So Sticky MZ made the forbidden video talking about Guardian scaling. Is he correct? Let's find out. So I think Sticky actually did a pretty good job addressing the Guardian meta, although I think he was mostly talking about TikTok arguments. Sticky's main point was the Guardian needed help against enemies of the light, such as Rolk, Nezrak, Oryx, the Sanctified Mind, Tenex the Abomination, they required raid teams. If the Guardian could truly one-shot every other Guardian, they would not need a raid team. But the point is, they do need a raid team. So that part, I think Sticky got correct. However, I don't think Sticky fully addressed the power scaling meta of the Guardians directly. The Guardian meta is admittedly a topic I like to avoid discussing because it's a really messy conversation to have. The problem is, there's a spectrum of where all the Guardians scale, and there is a hierarchy. Part of it is experience based, part of it is training based, part of it is feat based. And then we have the annoying part that I didn't tell anyone, and for good reason. The Guardian meta got a complete shakeup two times. The first was when Stasis was introduced, and the second time was when Strand was introduced. No one has a problem with saying the main character is as powerful as Saladin, Shax, Cade 6, Ikora Ray, Zavala, Saint, Osiris, now they are Strand. No one has an issue with saying the main character is powerful as them. But it's mostly with who scales below the main character people debate about. For where I scale Guardians, I use a hierarchy system. I use four different tiers. I use New Light. Experienced, Darkness users, slash even more experienced Guardians, and then I have the high end of the scalers, which is the Alliance tier. For new lights, it's a running joke to treat them as newborn children. People in the game don't really mess with new light Guardians, even adopt some for their fire teams. More experienced Guardians are willing to take new lights through the story and have no problem with it. And it's even a thing in the lore where Drifter got on, got on a Mithrax for accidentally saying he'd go and pillage the Cosmodrome, which was filled with new light. The experienced tier and the more experienced tier are the head cannon parts of the hierarchy, but it makes it easy for me to arrange the system. For the experienced tier, I'm going to assume you have a bit more experience under your belt and you've maybe done a few strikes and you've killed a few higher profile enemies here and there. So you're, you're doing a lot better than a new light and you have some experience and you have more access to light powers and you have more training. For the more experienced here slash the darkness users, I'll give you the basic explanation. For the more experienced here, here's my reasoning. For the darkness users, we don't have a whole lot of them. We mostly have named darkness users, and while we have known unnamed darkness users, they're unspecified. Meaning, they're just random people using strand or stasis. You can either find this in the Guardian Games lore for 2022 and 2023, or you can find this in the Warp and Weft logs for strand. The key part is training for strand and stasis is unnecessarily harsh and can possibly lead to your final death. Without the ghost, the Guardian could have died multiple times over for the last time in Lightfall, and without the ghost, if they died using stasis, they would have to be revived. Normal run-of-the-mill Guardians cannot handle darkness training. It takes a certain level of animal to handle that. Look at Aramis. Also, the main character about died when fighting Aramis. In the top tier is what I call the Alliance Heads. In the Alliance Heads, you have Zavala, you have Shax, Saladin, Marasov, Mithrax, Keitel, you have Ikora Ray, you have the Guardian, and a bunch of other named characters. Like, Crow matters too, but he's going to be doing more impressive stuff in Final Shape. Let's address what Ikora Ray said. If you take what Ikora Ray said and then implement that into the hierarchy system, that means all the Guardians share the same tier or the same relative tiers. Meaning, the spectrum is fulfilled by using only one tier and all we have to do is look at the Guardian and how strong they are and at what time period. 
Contrary to what Sticky says, there are no problems power scaling Guardians because you can scale Guardians to certain characters. Let me make a small point about the AP scaling. Planet busting and star busting is literally worthless when you have characters who can crap on infinite dimensions. Fool, it is an infinite dimensional functional space. The Vex often... Oh, why am I wasting my breath? Let's address the Rolk situation. Rolk was stronger than the Hive Gods by the Witch Queen time period. If he was alive today, he would still be stronger than the Hive Gods because he'd be able to get stronger. The problem that comes up for Rolk is Nezarak. Rolk was never stated anywhere in the lore to be stronger than Nezarak. Where that was gotten was the Nazarak's Whisper Glaive, and it had the text on the top where Rolk was the only disciple at the time, or the only notable disciple at the time, to make Nazarak a disciple. There was never anything stating that Rolk was ever stronger than Nazarak, just that he was the first disciple. It gets worse. For the holding back argument for Rolk, he didn't hold back that much at all just his one-shot hacks abilities and his bloodthirst. He didn't actually hold back the full extent of his full power. He still used what you could call 80-90% to 90 of his full power. When he was bloodthirsty, he was relative to when he was fighting the Guardians. He was even complimenting the Guardians for hurting him. Also, when Kallus was nerfed, he created nightmares that could take up to 9 Guardians to fight, and this was a Kallus that was nerfed, meaning he lost the nerf, then became a Disciple. So he got way stronger, or at the very least, he became his base form again, arguably higher than his base form. Kallus took on one Guardian that was amped, but that same Guardian would not output the same power as a fire team of six Guardians would, and they struggled against Nazarak when they fought Nazarak. Overall, those are the thoughts I had about Sticky's video. I'm on the same wavelength as Sticky. When a raid happens and you're in a fire team of six, it took a fire team of six to fight and kill those guys. We are definitely on the same wavelength on that front. The only problems I had with the video was mostly the power scaling point about Guardians and Rolk. Rolk is cool, but he's been power crept, and you can power scale the Guardians, even if you have to be really nuanced and fickle about how you do it. Because regardless of how you hit the topic, it's really annoying in general. If you agree with what I said, please leave a like. Share it around if you think I deserve it. Leave a comment leaving your opinion because that would be awesome. If you want to have a conversation, please join the Discord and we can have a talk about it directly. Have a good one, fellas. Peace!